Hey y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions, and welcome back to The 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Drew are going out and talking about different things throughout the world of baseball. And as you guys know, we did just have the trade deadline less than a week ago. It is currently Friday. You are going to be seeing this Saturday morning, so it is Saturday morning. Hope y'all are having a great Saturday so far. And Drew, how's your day been so far? It's going. I got my uh, I got my AT and T or whatever it's called, Oracle Park, uh, behind me. Uh, my team is my team is doing well, man. They're uh, they scored twenty three runs the other day, uh, and then of course they blew a lead the day after. But you know what? Hey, that's baseball. That's Coors Field. But I'm really excited to talk trades with you today. I think uh, this is something that it's such a unique season, and it makes for a very interesting finish. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people did not expect a lot of moves to happen as the playoffs are expanded and, you know, more teams are in contention. And we saw a lot of interesting moves go down this year. Uh, We saw teams like the Marlins both sell and buy and, you know, just a lot of different crazy moves. That's exactly what we're talking about today. And the structure we're going to go for this video is we're going to be steal or strikeout. Steal is going to be like a great trade for, you know, this team. We're going to say what team steals. And then, you know, for a strikeout, we'll say this team strikes out. And the way we're going to go off, we're just going to start in the AL East, and we're going to work our way to the NL West. Starting off right here with the deal that sent Tommy Malone to the Atlanta Braves for two players to be named later. Steal or strikeout? Ah, this one, this one was a little tough for me. Uh, I guess it really depends on who the players to be named later would be. Um, I'll, for now, I'll go ahead and say that this is a steal. And the reason why is, you know, the Braves, they've lost Soratka, they lost Hamels. They, they don't have the starting pitching depth that, depth that they probably need to be able to, you know, continue leading the NL East at the 18 and 14 record that they entered last week. Um, you know, Tommy Malone, he's a, he's a veteran, 33-year-old, 399 ERA, 31 strikeouts, four walks, and 29 innings. Not bad. Yeah, I'm going to go the same thing. I'm going steal right here. I like this trade. Again, having a veteran soft-throwing lefty, uh, that has an ERA under four. That's crazy. It's really rare throughout the game of baseball. And adding that flexibility, adding that um, pitcher into your rotation that you lost to Roca, Hamels, and others. You know, I think it's a great trade. It's going to help uh, bring up you know, players like Ian Anderson and Kyle Wright that are coming up your young prospects. Next up, we're going to be talking about the trade that went that sent Michael Givens to the Colorado Rockies for prospects Tyler Nevin and Taryn Bavara. Steal or strikeout? This one is this one is close. I, I'm going to go ahead and say strikeout, and here's why. You you start you start thinking about you know the Orioles and the Orioles. You know they they have a lot of young talent, man. They I, I've I've had a chance to watch a few of their games on MLB.tv. They they've got some they've got some real talent in their lineup. They've got some hitting. They've got you know they've got a long way to go in their bullpen. For them to be able to get two top 15 prospects in this deal out of the top 30 and continue to progress in this rebuilding sort of era for the Orioles, I don't know if a 30-year-old veteran, um, you know, reliever is really going to help the Rockies go from where they are now to where they need to be. I mean, the Rockies are in it, so I, I give them a lot of credit for, you know, trying to bolster their bullpen. But I'm going to go ahead and say this one is a strikeout, and I think the Orioles are going to get the best of this one. I completely agree. Um, strikeout here uh, by the Rockies. I think that for what, a lot of what the Orioles fans are telling me in the comment section of the video I made on this trade, they were saying how – Givens has always struggled as struggled as a closer, and we all know that Colorado doesn't have a closer. I don't even know who their closer is listed right now. Wade Davis has been terrible this year. But giving up two top 15 prospects from your organization uh, for a relief pitcher, again, relief pitchers did come at a premium, as we saw throughout the deadline. I think this is a steal for the Orioles, strikeout for the Rockies. I think great. this, this trade is going to really come back to haunt Colorado, especially with Givens pitching in a hitter-friendly course. Next up, we're going to be talking about the trade that sent Miguel Castro to my New York Mets in exchange for top prospect of the number 12 in the organization, Kevin Smith. Steal or strikeout? For the Mets, I'm going to go ahead and say this one's a steal. And, you know, they, you may disagree with me, uh, but this team, you know, we know, we know what the Mets have gone through with their bullpen. 
uh, you know, what it's, it's, it's incredible, right? What they, what they've really had to endure. And they, they constantly, you know, will sign these top, you know, closers that they think are going to be, you know, the next best thing. And then they end up being a flop and a flop and a flop. And, you know, the Mets, they, they've had issues with their bullpen. They, you know, again, and they've had injuries with the Tances and Mats. So they, you know, this guy, he's got a personal best uh, strikeout ratio right now to walks. He's, you know, he's under control for uh, until the 2022 season. Uh, yes, Smith is also a high, you know, top 12 prospect, made it to double A last year, but you know, the, uh, for me, this one is a steal for the Mets. I'm actually going to agree with you saying this is a steal. Again, we did see Miguel Castro give up a couple runs against the Yankees last night in that incredible game. Again, rest in peace, Tom Seaver. Terrible news for, you know, the organization and Mets yeah, fans, just in, fans around the baseball. Rest in peace to an ultimate champion. Yep. Helped us get to that 1969 World Series way before I was even alive. But um, like I said, a steal for the Mets. You know, uh, if Brody Van Wagner's comments on Kevin Smith being a fifth starter, you know, if those come true and then we're getting this a lot of time and control over Miguel Castro uh, to help this, you know, Mets bullpen. That's actually been really good this year. And like I said in the video, I see Miguel Castro as being an Edwin Diaz. You know, hard-throwing right-hander with control issues, uh, walks a lot of guys. So I think great comps there. And I think just, you know, moving to New York, you know, having more pieces around him, it might settle him down a little bit. Again, great K per nine this year. I think this is a steal for the Mets right now, but who knows what Kevin Smith will end up being. Next up, we're going to have be discussing the trade that sent Brandon Workman from the Red Sox to the Phillies in exchange for Connor Siebel. Steal or strikeout? All right, on this one, I'm going to say that this is a steal for the Phillies. It's a huge steal for them. Workman, you know, a lot of experience in that bullpen as a closer, also World Series experience, which is something that you can't, you know, that's something that you, you really can't calculate. Uh, it's more, more than the numbers and more than the analytics can provide. Uh, and Heath Embry, this is a guy that, again, out of the Giants organization originally, Giants gave up on him. I think he went in the, um, if I'm not mistaken, in the Nunez deal. I could be wrong, but I think he did go. I think he may have gone in the Nunez deal, or not, it may have been another deal. I can't remember uh, that Embry left the Giants. But, you know, me, career 360 uh, ERA. He, you know, not great lately, but also, you know, Workman's eligible for free agency this year. Embry's under control. So that that's important. Um, and the Red Sox, yeah, they do get some – they get a little bit back in return with Pavetta and Siebold, but – I think the Phillies are really I, – I believe the Phillies are in it. And Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on this one. Again, steal for the Phillies. Again, you saying the fourth-place Phillies are actually doing good this year. They are doing good this year. Harper is an MVP candidate again. Now, never did I think, you know, he's going to do it. He's never really been on a winning team, as I think you said previously in a podcast. But, you know, overall, I like this trade here. You're addressing your terrible bullpen out, getting, you know, two players with – you know, with tons of experience, tons of years under their belt. Again, World Series experience with Workman. And you're giving up with someone with like a career ERA in the six and then a prospect. Overall, I really, really like this trade for the Phillies. I hope you guys get swept this weekend by my New York Mets. Next up, we're going to talk about the trade that sent Mitch Moreland to the San Diego Padres for Eason Rosario and Hudson Potts. Steal or strikeout? Steal for the Padres. Steal for the Padres. I love me some Mitch Moreland. God, do I love him. He is, he, when you talk about a, a gamer, this guy, bigger the at bat, bigger the hitter. He, he, this guy, he steps up. Uh, you know, I love the Padres. I love what they've done. We're going to talk more about them, you know, coming up here. They are going for it. And why not? Why not go for it in a, in a pandemic year? Even though he's 34 years old, he's a huge threat against right-handed pitching. All that World Series experience, one of the biggest, maybe one of, maybe the biggest home run of the uh, 2009, uh, 2018 World Series, uh, when the 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 Red Sox were down. I believe it was game. I want to say maybe it was game four, uh, and they were up two-one in the series. 
and the pot, the Dodgers took a four nothing or three nothing lead. Maybe it was even a bigger lead on a Puig home run in the world series. And Moreland comes up and hits a huge three run homer, gets them back in the game. And then the Red Sox end up coming back to win that game, to go up three, one. And then of course, finish them off in five. God, did I love that series? I hate the Dodgers. So Moreland, he's, he's my guy. Hudson Potts and Rosario, you know, yeah, they, they're, they are, you know, possible, you know, young talent for the future. They're the 16th and 19th uh, in the Padres farm system. To me, if, you know, once you get past 15, it's a, it's kind of a, you know, to me, it, it could go either way. So for me, Padres, you got another steal and you got more coming. Yeah, I, I am going to agree. It tends to, uh, you know, a lot of these trades, is real, there's a clear winner and, you know, loser in this. But, again, a steal for the Padres. Mitch Moreland, he's having his best season at the age of 34. You know, he, you know, changed his swing to have a little bit more launch angle. And I think that's really helped him out this year. Again, two prospects sent it over to the Red Sox. And it looks like you guys are tearing it down and rebuilding. But, you know, this is also a steal for the Red Sox. If you think about, about it, you know, Moreland also for the Padres has an option for next year. Very cheap, helps the Padres look for their, you know, win now, win in the future, as the Mets, Brody Van Wagenen saying. Overall, great trade by the Padres. Again, more World Series experience heading over that San Diego team. I love, love, love this trade for San Diego. He's going to be hitting slams in Slam Diego. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the trade that sent Kevin Pillar from the Red Sox to the Colorado Rockies for international bonus pool money and a player to be named later. Steal or strike out? Steal for the Rockies. Steal for the Rockies. Love me some Kevin Pillar. I was, I was on the bandwagon there for him to re-sign with the Giants. I understand why they didn't do it. Um, came back to bite us in the bum, no pun intended, bum garner starting this weekend against the Giants. Uh, came back to bite the Giants on on uh, Wednesday. I'm sorry, on third. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, when uh, he hit, you know, had the game, the had a triple to give the Rockies the lead. He's a clutch player. He is on a one year deal, so you're not going to have him long term. But you know, solid center fielder, uh, really, you know, veteran presence in the lineup to go along with you know, some of the great offense that you're seeing out of, out of Colorado this year with Charlie Blackman. Um, yes, they've been using Garrett Hampson and Hilliard in center since Dahl went on the injured list, but. Yeah, I'm going to agree here. Steal for the Rockies. You guys finally get a, a true center fielder with speed to cover that massive outfield of Coors Field, the biggest outfield in baseball. Again, this is going to, this is an amazing trade for you guys. Not giving up too much, uh, you know, in value too. Again, he's already won you a game against San Francisco. You know, it's also going to allow someone like Charlie Blackman to, you know, move over to DH. I think that's going to help him out a ton. All right. Next up, we're going to talk about the trade that sent Jose Martinez from the Rays to the Cubs for two players to be named later. Steal or strikeout? On this one, I'm going to say steal for the Rays. We might disagree on this one. Steal for the Rays. I am not a fan of Jose Martinez. I, I do not see him as, yeah, it maybe helps that we're in a DH mode here, but believe me, the Rays, if they, if they know anything, it's talent and it's, you know, it's how players are developing because they have one of the best developing, you know, franchises in the history of baseball. They are incredible. So if they don't think Jose Martinez is going to be part of their future, and if they think two players to be named later are, you know, going to be better in the long run, I trust the Rays on this one. Steal for the Rays. Yeah, I am going to disagree with you on one of the few. I think it's a strikeout for the Rays and a steal for the Cubs. You know, I really like Jose Martinez getting him back to the NL Central in his former stomping grounds. Again, we, we obviously know this guy has a bat, 300 hitter, has a little bit of pop in his bat, a little bit crazy. But, you know, as you said, the Rays know something. They have one of the best, you know, coaching staffs and, you know, player development systems in baseball. If they don't see him, you know, that's, that's something to consider. But right now, as it stands, getting another bat in this Cubs lineup for a DH, a solid option with no injuries plaguing them, I think it's a steal for the Cubs. Next up, we're going to talk about the trade that sent Taiwan Walker from the Mariners to the Blue Jays for a player to be named later. Steal or strikeout? I got a steal for the Blue Jays on this one. I'm a, I'm a huge Taiwan Walker fan, although he has moved around a little bit. Uh, sometimes that can show that 
He's not necessarily a guy that uh, they believe in as much. Um, you know, he's been, he was to Arizona and then came back. So did they really believe in him? Obviously not. Tommy John surgery in 2018. Still, I think this is a, this is a steal for the Blue Jays because they uh, currently have three starters on the injured list, Shoemaker, Pearson, and Thornton. So they need some arms in their rotation. Steal for the Blue Jays. And by the way, who else said the Blue Jays were going to be good this year? Hey, I, know, I never said the Blue Jays would be bad this year. I, saw, I had them in third place, I believe it is. But again, steal for the Blue Jays. I really like Taiwan Walker. Again, former number six prospect in, I believe it was 2015. Really like this trade. He pitched six shutout innings. He's been really solid in the last couple games. Two rough starts, otherwise been dominant this year enough. So I picked him up on fantasy. And, you know, I think great trade here for the Blue Jays. Big steal. So next up, we're actually, for a little bit right here, just to catch up on a lot of them, since there actually are so many trades, we're actually getting a little long here. Uh, we're going to talk about just steal and strikeout just really quick here. So the next one we're talking about is for the Blue Jays. Robbie Ray gets traded for Travis Bergen. Steal or strikeout? Steal for the Blue Jays. I'm going to agree. Steal for the Blue Jays. Great pick, pick up here. Jonathan VR sent to the Blue Jays for a player to be named later, reportedly Griffin Coney. Steal or strikeout? I'm going to say steal for the Marlins on this one. I think steal for the Blue Jays. I, I really like VR. I think, you know, last year, 20 home runs hit close to 300. I like this. Yeah, trade. he's moved around, moved around too much. I don't That's like true. guys that have moved around too much. And I've heard he has a terrible attitude. Steal <laughs> for the Marlins. <laughs> Ross Stripling sent over to the Blue Jays for two players to be named later. Steal for the Blue Jays. I'll never say anything's a steal for the Dodgers. <laughs> I'll agree. I really like this trade for the Blue Jays. Ross Stripling is a great pitcher, especially out of the bullpen. Gerard Dyson traded from the uh, Pirates to the White Sox for international pool money. Steal for the White Sox. As much, you know, as much depth as they can get, they're pushing for the playoffs. Steal for the White Sox. Yeah, I, I agree. Steal for the White Sox. You're not giving up much. You're getting a speed defender out in center field. To help veteran. That terrible, yeah, veteran. To help that terrible defensive team. Uh, in Chicago. Next up, we're going to do the Zach Short traded from uh, the Cubs to the Tigers in exchange for Cam Cameron Mabin. Steal or strikeout? Steal for the Tigers. Not a fan of Cameron Mabin. Don't drink and drive, kids. <laughs> I, I agree. Steal for the Tigers. You guys are getting a top prospect for basically nothing. Basically a free agent pickup. Steal for the Tigers. Next up, the trade that sent Brian Goodwin from the Angels to the Reds for Packing Mountain. Steal or, or strikeout? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say steal for the Angels. Not a fan of Goodwin. Hopefully they get something back in return here, some future. Angels are out of it anyway. Move on. Steal for the Angels. I agree. Steal for the Angels. I really like this. You guys are getting a left-hand pitcher that looks like he's a top prospect, number 15, I believe, in your organization. Really think that uh, this guy has potential and helps out your struggling rotation. Steal for the Angels. Mike. My, next up, Mike Miner traded from the Rangers to the A's for Marcus Smith and Dustin Harris. Steal or strikeout? I will say surprising first, but steal for the A's. They need the depth. They need the pitching. It's going to be a tough run here for the A's. They've, they've been off for the week because of their COVID situation. Uh, Daniel Mengden uh, testing positive for, for coronavirus. So they need as much pitching depth as they can get. I know they can hit, but can they pitch to get to the ALCS? I sure hope so because I don't want to be wrong. I agree. Steal for the A's. I really like this move. Again, you guys have had a little bit of struggling. Montas has fallen off big time. Again, Megden getting COVID. I think it's a great trade for the A's, you know, getting a, a pitcher that, you know, veteran pitcher that has had, you know, experience and ha did have a great season last year, you know, shut down the Dodgers. So if you can shut down the Dodgers, you definitely can make a run in the postseason steal for the A's. Next up, Archie Bradley traded from the Diamondbacks to the Reds for Josh Van Meter and Stuart Fairchild. Steal or strikeout? I'm gonna say steal for the date for the Diamondbacks. I'm not a not a not a fan of Archie Bradley, and you get a top eleven prospect for this deal. You know, it, Archie Bradley, man, just struggling this year. Seriously, struggling. Not to, is not looking good. Four two two ERA uh, in only ten appearances this year. Uh, the Diamondbacks, I think they're smart to sell at this point because they they know they're out of it. So, steal for the D-backs. I agree. Steal for the D-backs and the Reds. Who knows what Bradley will be. Again, has been dominant in the past. You guys are adding another struggling arm to your struggling bullpen. At least it's not the Mets adding a good arm that turns out to be struggling. Steal for the Diamondbacks.
Alrighty, next up we have the Rob. We're just do two and one here. Robinson, Chirinos, and Todd Frazier traded to the New York Mets for players to be named later each. Steal or strikeout? Tom Seaver just died. Go Mets. Steal both of them. How can you not like Todd Frazier? Coolest guy in the world. Although I don't know what the Mets are smoking here. Uh, they they already had him once. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and give the benefit of the doubt to your New York Mets. Hey, hey in, in his Mets return, he went 0 for 5. He did hit a homer yesterday, so I can say that much. Torinos did have a hit yesterday, too. Uh, we'll see what they do later on today. Right now, steal for the Mets, but players to be named later have come back to haunt this organization more than once before. Coming down, wrapping it up with some bigger trades. First off, Trevor Rosenthal traded to the Padres for Edward Olivarius. Steal or strikeout? Steal for the Padres again. They they do it again. Uh, this guy he has he has come back. He is he has emerged. You know it, it took some time to uh, get it back after he lost it with the with the Cardinals. But he's you know getting back. Maybe it was getting back to a familiar manager with Matheny in in Kansas City. This year three two nine ERA, twenty one strikeouts over thirteen innings. Uh, and they were able to flip him for, you know, Oliveris, who is really not that big of a prospect, number 20. The player to be named later, you know, who knows? Rosenthal is going to make a strong bullpen even stronger. Um, you know, yes, they haven't been that great this year, and I know they've had some injuries, but I'm telling you, this could be a huge impact on the NL West. Steal for the Padres. I'm going to put up here first time, steal for both clubs. I like this for the Royals that you guys just picked him up, a flyer, you know, bringing him back. You guys got the number 20 prospect. That's something for your organization will provide trade value or, you know, potentially some actual value in game. And then just, you know, Trevor Rosenthal, again, to steal for the Padres. I think it's a great arm helping your very, 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 very times a billion, uh, you know, bad bullpen. I think it's a great trade for the Padres, steal for you guys. Next up, the Starling Marte trade that sent him from the Diamondbacks to the Miami Marlins for uh, Caleb Smith, Humberto Mejia, and Julio Frias. Steal or strike out? Ah, <sighs> man. Oh, Marlins. The Marlins, they just, they just don't get it. This is a massive steal for the Diamondbacks. A massive steal for the Diamondbacks. I don't know what they were thinking. The Marlins, what are they doing? You do not go for it in a season where you are still rebuilding. I don't care if you're winning. I don't care if you're near 500. Do not do this. Do not do this. You don't go out and get it. I know he had a home run to win a game the other day. I get it. Okay. But, I mean, not only – okay, Caleb Smith, he's under control for the net until 2023 – and has shown promise. But then, you know, a guy like Mejia, you don't know, this guy could end up being a superstar. You know, he could end up being, you know, one of the, one of the top starters in the league. You just don't know. Yeah, he's, he's young, but he's 23 years old, and he just made his major league deb debut. You don't – there's a reason Starling Marte has moved around, okay? And the Marlins made a huge mistake here. It's going to come back to bite them. It's going to stunt their growth. This is a huge win for the Diamondbacks. You might disagree with me. It's a huge win for the Diamondbacks. You know, I, I, I like this. I, uh, you know, I steal for the Diamondbacks. However, for the uh, Marlins, getting Starling Marte, he's having a great season. Who knows if you guys do make the playoffs. This does look good right now. Um, but, you know, you can always, if you don't, flip him. He does have one more year of control. He has a club option this year, I believe. I believe it is. So if you guys pick up that, you guys still have him for one more year. But for the Diamondbacks, huge steal for you guys. Looks like the Marlins screwed up two back-to-back -back years trading you a, an amazing pitcher. They did it with Zach Gallen. Who knows? This guy's an absolute stud. Caleb Smith and Humberto Mejia and, you know, Julio Frias. The, the Marlins are just trading you guys just pitchers for practically nothing right now. Or, I mean, Marte has value in this trade compared to the Zach Gallen trade. But overall, I, I really liked it for the Diamondbacks. Saw what you guys got with Zach Gallen. This trade looks like if, it repeat, if history repeats, this looks like it's going to be a good trade for the Diamondbacks. Huge steal for the Diamondbacks. All right. If you guys have guessed it, we're leaving the two very confusingest 
I said that in my uh, NOLA trade video. I don't know if you caught that one, Mr. Teacher over here. But we're going to first off start off with the Austin NOLA trade that sent Austin NOLA and two relief pitchers to the Mariners for Taylor Trammell, Ty France, and let's just go Andres Munoz and a catcher. Steal or strike out? Ah, this one's tough. This one's tough because the top, um, because the Mariners get the number five prospect uh, and the number 60 overall pop prospect, prospect in Taylor Trammell. Uh, but, you know, I, I, like, I like that the Padres got not only Nola, but that they get Adams and Atavila in the deal. They, they help, again, with their depth at catcher. They help. He can also play first. Uh, you know, he's, he's had a good season, and he's under control for another five years when we talk about Austin Nola. So that's, that's a huge move for them. Um, we'll see what Torrens and Munoz might look like. Again, you don't know. So, we'll, you know, we'll see. Uh, Ty France, you know, he's, he's had some uh, plate appearances this year, not many, 61 plate appearances. I, I think this is a wash. I think this one's a wash. I think it's right down the middle. I think it's going to help both teams. Um, I think it may – this one may end up going in the favor of the Padres, though. I think the Padres got the better of this deal. It's close. Steal for the Padres. Yeah, so but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's quite right down the middle. I've had you know this is the best video I have, that has ever done on my channel. Thank you guys so much for the support on this one. Almost two thousand views. Time I'm recording, crazy. Thank you guys so much for that. But you know, right down the middle, I've heard from both sides of this deal. And for the for the Padres, let's see what you guys are. You guys are getting two relief pitchers again. You know, helping out your bullpen. You guys are getting. Uh, a catcher with Austin Nola, who since getting called up last year is third in war. You know, this is a premium position in catcher. You guys do not get very many, you know, hitters coming out of the catcher's position. And, you know, having third and war behind Grandal and JT Rio Muto, and you see how much it takes to trade one of them and acquire one of them. I think it's a great trade. Um, and, you know, along with two relief pitchers. And considering you have them under control for five years, if you're to acquire one of those two guys, you don't have them for very long. So considering you get five years of control for Nola and a top three catcher, arguably in baseball, since he got called up, really like this trade. Now from the Mariners, Taylor Trammell, from what I've heard, you know, he's moved around from the Reds. You guys got him for basically nothing. You flipped him here. You know, number five, number 60. The swing does not made it for the majors. He's a defensive speed uh, center fielder. That's what we see in him. The piece that um, everyone's talking about in this trade is Ty France and how much of a stud, you know, San Diego is projecting them out to be. The fans have spoken on this one. They've changed my mind. You know, I thought this was a great trade for the, you know, Padres. They're trying – they're starting to change it. Ty France may be an absolute stud. Again, the Mariners, you guys did something with Kalenic. Kalenic didn't have as much value when he got traded originally, but look what, how much he, he grew with uh, Seattle. You know, Ty France may very well do the same. Again, plate appearances too. He's kind of blocked in San Diego. And then Andres Munoz. Tommy John surgery has fixed pitchers in the past. This guy throws 104. A pitcher, like, the Padres need pitching. It would be smart to include someone else in this trade. Munoz, I think, at the very least, a bullpen arm, a very good closer. I love this trade for the Mariners. I think it's a steal for the Mariners right now. Uh, but, again, steal for the Padres. It's hard. This trade's right in the middle. Like you said, it's a wash down the middle. I like it both sides of it. Finally, we're going to be talking about the biggest trade that went down from the Cleveland Indians over to San Diego. We have Mike Clevenger per a handful of prospects and a handful of major leaguers. Steal or strikeout? Steal, 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 steal for the Padres. Steal. Man, did they ever make a steal here. And, oh, man, did they do it at the right time. What a move for this club. What a move. This guy is an absolute stud. I've been saying it, you know, along with Trevor Bauer, who I also love. This guy, he is just – he is going to continue to be one of the best, one of the elite pitchers in the game. I don't care what he did as far as breaking team protocols. Now, if he's making people sick or getting them, uh, you know, making people unsafe, then I understand that. Okay, listen, I'm, I'm trying to run a school here, so I understand what that, what that looks like. But, oh, my goodness, did the Padres make a steal here. Austin Hedges no longer needed. 
They have all the catching that they could ever want now with Jason Castro and Austin Nola. So they don't need Austin Hedges anymore. Cal, Contr Cal, Cal Quantrill, to me, I've seen him pitch, not real, to me, not that impressed. When you talk about, everyone's talking about how the Padres sent the number seven, nine, and 11 prospects. Well, the Padres have had so many prospects over the years that have not panned out. Okay, you can just go on and on and on and on. Even, even you know, Reyes, Fran Mill Reyes, who they sent to the Indians, He's, he's okay. I mean, he's not, he, he's, he strikes out a lot. I mean, he can, he can hit. I don't know if that guy's going to win you a World Series, okay? This guy, Clevenger, he can match up. They're, gonna get, they're, they're going to get to the playoffs, this team. He's what you need to be able to match up to get you started in a series. I didn't feel like their starting pitching was good enough. Now I feel like they have enough depth. Their, their bullpen got a little bit of a bolster from their other moves. I feel like they made good moves. I felt like A.J. Preller made moves that kind of, you know, mixed and matched to what they needed. But this makes them a serious contender. This puts them up there with the Dodgers. This puts, up, puts them up there in a situation where they could actually win the National League and get to the World Series. So huge move for the Padres. Their fans deserve it. The, you know, the, the organization deserves it. They've been waiting and waiting and waiting for these prospects to pan out. They never have. Now, finally, they have the, their blue chip guys. You know, when you talk about Tatis Jr. and then all the moves they brought in with Machado and Hosmer and, you know, these just the amount of talent that they have on this team now at the major league level, it's I've never seen a team. I've never seen a San Diego Padres team this talented. They have what it takes. And, you know, that's all you can ask for as a fan. Padres win this deal, and it's a steal. Yep, completely agree. Steal for the San Diego Padres. You guys are also, you know, getting, you know, probably to even out the deal, Greg Allen, and um, I believe it's a player to be named later in this deal. But you're sending over Cal Quantrill, former top prospect. You know, he's pitched out of the bullpen, you know, hasn't really, you know, ha had a spot yet. Again, you don't need um, – you guys don't need Austin Hedges anymore. Uh, you guys got Jason Castro and Austin Nola. By the way, steal for the uh, Padres on the Jason Castro trade. Like that for you guys. You know, adding a second catcher, I don't think we – we'll look right, right by that trade. Uh, but, uh, you know, trading Hedges, adding to that trade. Gabriel Arias, Owen Miller, both infield prospects for you guys. Blocked by Tatis. Like, and, and, you know, other players ahead of them, you know, ranked through one through eight. You know, I think, you know, trading – this trade is a lot of value heading over. It's, it's, it's quantity over quality heading over to Cleveland here. And the quantity is based up on players that San Diego does not have a spot for on their roster, which, what, which is what makes this trade so good for San Diego. You guys are also getting uh, rid of outfield Josh Naylor. Again, where is he going to play? You guys got Trent Grisham. Man, was that an absolute steal of a deal for you guys. Wow, Grisham looks good. And then you also, you know, give up Joey Cantillo. I think that's going to be the best piece headed over to uh, Cleveland in this trade. I really like J Joey Cantillo. Looks like he's going to be a stud. I, I, I mean, Mike Clevenger, though, you are arguably a top 10 pitcher in baseball, top 15 at the very least. You know, like you said, you're gonna, he's going to go out there. He's a gamer. He's going to go out there. Again, postseason experience, I believe. Uh, he was on that 2016 team. Um, but I, I like this trade for the Padres. You guys are adding Chris Paddock and Mike Clevenger at the top of that rotation. That is very, very solid. Again, these guys do have some experience. So they uh, – or Clevenger does, does have some experience, so he will be able to help the young players up. He'll even help Chris Paddock, who is such a stud overall, and control over Clevenger. Again, the biggest thing the Padres did this trade deadline is look in their future. They did not look for just win this year and trying to go out all this year. This trade is justified. Every trade the Padres made this, this deadline is justified because 90% of the players they acquired have, you know, contracts going beyond the 2020 season, which makes me look at them and be like, hey, this might be the next Los Angeles Dodgers. Thank you all so much for watching this, you know, podcast where we talked about the trades going down here. 
I hope you all enjoyed, you know, thank you all so much for the support we had on trade video deadline videos, you know, more videos coming out and get some creative stuff going on while we wait for the postseason to begin, you know, try to upload as much as possible. Drew, do you have any inspiring quote or any inspiring things to uh, head us out on? Don't drink and drive. Like I said, Cameron Mabin. Uh, now enjoy, enjoy the rest of the uh, baseball season, everyone. Uh, it's, it's going to come down to the wire. You're going to have, a lot of these, a lot of these races are going to, well, now I shouldn't even say races, the eight teams that each, um, you know, league is taking, it's going to come down to the wire, man. So enjoy it, sit back, relax. Uh, and let's see what happens. It, it, it should be definitely unlike anything we've ever seen before. Yeah, for sure. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next podcast. Peace out.